Howdy and welcome, Internet. Today we begin by going through our setup for Path to Glory and Age of Sigmar. This is Session Zero. My brother and I have decided to play some narrative games in Age of Sigmar in the format of Path to Glory. This will not be our first time playing this type of game, but it is our first time to play Path to Glory. We both enjoyed the computer game Dawn of War, and it eventually had a campaign setup called Dark Crusade, where your units could become elite and have special abilities. We quite liked that, and decided to give the fantasy tabletop version a chance. Our friend Nathan will also be joining us. The twist here is that we've switched armies. I will have the Ogre Ma tribes, and my brother will have the Soul Blight Grave Lords. While Nathan will be playing his Old World Empire units as Cities of Sigmar. The Ogres are all painted, except for the Noblars, and they aren't likely to make an appearance because I really don't enjoy playing them, but I do enjoy playing the Ogre Monster Trucks, also known as Beast Claw Raiders. Uh, we will also see much of the dad bod or gut buster side of the battle tome. Um, the soul blight grave lords on the other hand are older than I am and there are a lot of them that are unpainted. Uh, some of the characters may get painted as we play through the series but we will see. Do not expect the massive bodies to get painted because you will be disappointed. Some of the units will be proxies uh, on the correct sized bases for 3rd edition of Age of Sigmar. Some parts of our army will also be on square bases and they will remain that way because we're a little bit lazy. We chose to do a slow crawl from the starting point called Vanguard. At the start we will be limited to 6 units in total on our order of battle with a total matched play cost of 600 points. From that point on, we are going to be purchasing additional units with glory, not with matched play points. But when we construct our lists, we will still have to adhere to match play cost. These units have some other limitations and are as follows. We can have on our order of battle up to three heroes and one of each of the following. Monsters, war machines, wizards, priests, reinforced units, and allies. We are allowed one starting territory at this point value, which gives us the ability to increase those unit types at the start of the game. We chose to start at this value in part because we switched armies and will need some time to build our fluency with their rules and abilities, but also to give the narrative a chance to build and change as we play games. Eric chose Wildlands as his starting territory, which increases his monster limit by one, allowing him to have up to two monsters on his order of battle. Andrew chose the Arcane Waypoint to increase the number of wizards he can take from one to two. And we'll need to upgrade that almost immediately, as almost all of his non-unique hero options are wizards. One important thing to note, specifically for the Soul Blight Gravelords, is that summonable units are not written on the order of battle, so they won't be taking casualty rolls, and they also will not be gaining any renown, which means they cannot have veteran abilities. Nathan shows the small settlement, which increases his reinforcement allotment from 1 to 2. For now, we plan to stick to the Path to Glory battle plans, mostly. We will play a matched play battle plan in addition to the Path to Glory ones. Because we plan to play two games at each step of the campaign before we bump up the list points. There is one addendum to this. At the beginning our Vanguard units are going to be be playing three games at the 600 point level instead of two but we are going to aim for two battles minimum at each value. This is partly to allow us to explore in addition to adding units to our order of battle. This will be more of an issue for Eric since his units are expensive. Uh, Nathan will have less of a difficult time with this because his units are cheaper at the base cost. 
Andrew, however, will have the easiest time because he doesn't have to pay for summonable units on his order of battle. We will be using a few techniques to show place gameplay. Some of our usual recap style gameplay will be there, but I intend to try out a few fast time videos with voiceover and maybe a long form video thrown in there if I can get the kids to cooperate in the background. In addition to gameplay, after action reports and commentary, I have also started a terrain video in the how-to format which will be posted eventually in this series. At the time of recording this video, Nathan and Andrew have played two battles, one of which we did not get any video footage for, so in that I apologize, but I do have a narrative recap for you. The Meatfish Tribe and the Hammer Hall units of Age of Sigmar. A sudden assault on a Cities of Sigmar encampment. Ogre Gluttons crash into the Free Guild handgunners and Free Guild guards. Handgunners get off some shots before being overrun by the ogres. The guards hold their ground. Free Guild pistoliers fire upon the ogre tyrant and continue their blasting as they run headlong into combat with the bully. The ogre weathers the barrage of pistol fire and bashes the squad, sending their captain away alone at the end of the round. Ogres control three quarters of the battlefield. The ogres get stuck in against the wall of halberds from the free guild guards. The general joins the fight dealing the killing blow to some ogre gluttons. The Slaughtermaster gets in on the fight issuing a challenge to the Free Guild General with little to show for it. The Free Guild's Battle Mage has little impact so far on the fight. Ogre Gluttons fall to the remaining Hallbirds leaving the Slaughtermaster to fend for himself. Ogre Gut Magic has turned foul and has no effect for the Slaughtermaster which he desperately needed to survive the battle, but falls short of his goals. The Tyrant tackles the Free Guild General, nearly killing him. But the loyal Free Guild Guard keep the Tyrant distracted while the Battle Mage blasts the Tyrant with an arcane bolt, nearly killing him. But the Ogre Warlord again defies the odds and refuses to give up his last breath. The Ogre Warlord stands alone against a handful of Halberd Guards, the Free Guild General, and the Battle Mage each within his grasp. He blasts the battle mage with his brace of ogre pistols, cuts down the general with his glaive, and pummels the remaining free guild guards with his thunder mace, leaving him standing alone on the battlefield of this small encampment that once was held by the cities of Sigmar. As always, thanks for watching Drubaka's Network, and stay tuned for a few more episodes rapidly coming your way.